Go back to size. It's just getting in the cycle at the right and having your, your stuff. And then a lot of us, as far as like the business, like we do a lot of business credit stuff. A lot of people's files are, incom are incomplete. That'd be the difference that of five or six thousand dollars, twenty, fifty, a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars, numbers like that. So a lot of people say, "Oh, I got an eighty-five payday score." Well, that don't necessarily mean at all. Eighty payday score. What is your file look like? What are your trade like? How long? How long do you get it? Like a Office Depot, they have a card, right? They used to they're Staples too. It's the same company. Well, City underwrites their card, so then I'm gonna go open up. I'm gonna go open up a Office Depot account, a Net Thirty, work my way up to Revolving. I'm gonna sign up for their rewards. Now, now in the back channel, I'm in City System already as a preferred customer. So now, when I go to apply for that card. I've got more odds, it's more likely than I'm going to get it. And then little simple tricks on building your business credit. Um, a lot of the stuff that you buy around the house, like toilet paper, soap, uh, janitorial supplies, printer, ink, you just change your spending habits to start buying that stuff through your business. Now, you might be paying a little bit more money for it, but you're getting it on your your business account is it me so or you like, breaking up can you hear me yeah you've been breaking up for the least three minutes at least on my end hello yeah you was you was going in and out yeah you eating up the bandwidth sometimes you have to just sit for like 10 seconds 10 to 12 seconds just let it Silent and then, then start back talking. Can you hear me now? Yep. All right. But I was saying, like, uh, like your business credit, you can get a lot of uh, stuff done by just changing your spending habits, like your toilet paper, your dish soap, stuff that you already buy anyway. You're going to use it pens, paper, ink, you can actually go through, you know, Office Depot and pick up your paper, go through Uline and get your toilet paper. That gets you a trade line. So now you're building your credit just based on your spending habits as well. Because sometimes it's hard for people to find stuff that you can buy and use. <clears throat> and that's some of the tricks that I use too. And then now, like back to the city card thing, you do the same thing with other cards, like city card, city have back to gas cards. So you want to attack these accounts like that and be working on them. So you're already listed as a preferred customer in the background before you even go and apply for the card because you can't see it. You can't see it on your end, but on their end and their back office, you, they're keeping track of all of their customers. And that's how a lot of cats end up getting bigger limits than just going and applying off the rip. It's kind of a game you want to set up. Uh, another big thing is like the rewards cards. If you got a business, like just reward points, like if you want to get a shell card, then go to shell and sign up for their, you know, little $5 uh, gift cards and all of that. Five cent off a gallon. If you use this card, reward points and all of that always sign up for that and that does two things that puts you in whatever their underwriting system is whether it's american express city but it also um, allows you to kind of manipulate your numbers a little bit if you look on some of those applications they'd be asking you how much you make you know you can be creative with the numbers all of that system gets funneled in remember they're buying data all the time so all of that stuff gets funneled into the system. It's all about data collection. When you learn how to manipulate data, you can get very far in this thing. And that's kind of what we're offering our clients and stuff. And it's amazing when they uh, finally start getting it.
and it's not anything that happens like right away or overnight, but little by little, you'll start seeing it. That's why I like to start people with their personal credit. Because if your personal credit is straight, then your business credit will be no problem. And you can do business credit with no money. You can, if that's possible. But it's a lot of, uh, this takes a lot of time to build up everything. Yeah, a lot of time to build up. <clears throat> You're talking about a two year, two year uh, track there. Money and good credit makes everything go a lot faster. I always tell people that. They ask me about how fast can it go. It can go as fast as your credit or your or the money that you have. <laughs> yeah, that's obvious. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people don't realize that. Yeah. But yeah, that's what we're trying to do. And like, especially learning how to operate out of trust, man. I, I work with a lot of these attorneys and stuff. That's all they do all day. All your assets and stuff are, are protected. And then a lot of people don't realize that you can actually, you can, you can wrap that trust up so many different ways where they're wrapped inside of each other four or five times. That's why you can't sue none of these big corporations. Because after you're done trying to sue the bank or something for two, three years, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's another trust over here. You got to do that again for two or three years. Some of them will just pay you off. But I'm talking about like the big lawsuits where you're trying to hit them for 100, 200 million and all of that stuff when you get into the class action suits. Yeah. That's what takes mm. so long. Yeah. Whistleblowers and all that. Yep. You can do it. But, but it's, a lot of this stuff is out here to be had. I mean, I've done it. A lot of people that are that do it just have a knowledge about how how the FDCPA works and knowing how to do credit repair and setting up trust and stuff and how to operate, man, is important. Read as much about trust as you can. Look up asset protection. That's another good thing. And then you'll see how we're giving such a great deal to do your trust when you start calling around, because I did it. They're charging for what we're offering people. They're charging 20, 30, 40 grand. And that's just to get started. That's not the maintenance fee that you got to pay if you're in Seychelles. You know, you got to have a, a registered agent over there, a mail service, somebody to go, go to the bank for you when your checks come in. All of that costs be adding up. So just trying to give people, especially in our community, an opportunity to have their stuff set up, too, and get the same tax benefits that they're getting from operating correctly. Because there's a lot of write-offs that come with having a trust set up properly. It's uh, important. It'll save you on your taxes. And really, when you get it all set up, like especially an example with real estate, I like to give is once you you say you got an apartment complex, that apartment complex is uh giving you ten thousand dollars a month profit. It's worth a million dollars. You put that that in your trust. Well, now you can go get a loan after you take care of some other stuff with your trust, like getting it getting a value put on it. You can go get a loan, man. Back by your back by your trust. And then you just make sure that you don't have any, uh, you don't go over the 10,000, whatever it is that the payment is, you, you know, take enough money and figure out the numbers. So your payments may be like 7,000 a month, but yeah, that loan money is you, you can live off of that. They can't tax it or nothing. you you don't have to pay taxes if you live that way. That's what some of the rich people are doing. There's also a documentary. I'll see, can I find it and put it up for everybody? Um, I can't remember the name of it, but it was uh, the Johnson and Johnson family, like your Johnson and Johnson baby powder. And they were showing how they all get together every year and their CPA comes and meets with them and they lay out a game plan based on whatever the new tax codes and stuff are. They lay out a game plan for the year. 
we don't operate like that. That's how we should be sitting down and sitting wow. down with our CPA and saying, okay, what are the benefits um, that are, are coming out or how can we get some more tax credits? That's why people like, you know, Walmart and Trump and all that stuff don't pay taxes. It's not any secret. He's just operating right because he was taught to do that. We weren't. I didn't know about any tax credits or anything like that when I was 18 years old. And the main I didn't thing, even know that was important. And the main thing what happens with all these these people that you keep talking about and what our community don't do is we, they share their credit. Yes. See, once I got a 750, I, oh, I got a 750. Yeah, I got 850. Okay, cool. So, so what? Who gives it? So what? Yep. You don't get to a point to where we understand that you can't do it all by yourself. You can't. So, you know, once you get your 850, you need some more 850s and some more 750s around you. And then we really can do something. That's when you really got some buying power. That's when you really got. You can get you some land. And build something. Right. This is agriculture is That's where you need to be thinking about. Agriculture. Water. Real talk, bro. Real talk. What's up, Antonio? What up, though, man? What up? What up, man? Good to hear your voice. How you doing? I'm well, man. Right on. Likewise. Likewise, man. Good to hear you guys talk, man. Be yeah, we're going we, to try and get a, get on here in powwow once a week. Start uh start sharing our, our information and start working together a little bit. Get everybody's credit and stuff together and get in and start working together like these cats are doing. See, like another big thing uh, people can do once you, you know, you got your credit together is uh out as far as building too. When we get to that in a second, but the tax deeds, the tax tax lien sales, uh, Almaz and uh, I think Veronica and Almaz, she Veronica got out of here. I'll try and I was trying to get her in here so she can talk to you guys about it. But yeah, man, you can pick up property for twenty five hundred bucks. It might need some work. Five six hundred bucks in some places. Uh, some of you guys are down south mm -hmm. and on on the southeast. The property's cheap. You go down there and pick yourself up something and put and take your credit card leverage that and, and fix it up and sell it i was just listening to a lady she picked up some uh land for 300 bucks mm -hmm. wow. the developer walked in right after her trying to buy it but she had already did it uh, had already got it she did an over the counter like after the sale whatever was left they call that over the counter so <laughs> she got it for 300 dude came right up to her and offered her three hundred thousand dollars well, the property's worth a million bucks. So guess what she's going to do? She's going to build on it. So for $300 and her having her credit straight to be able to fix it up or do whatever she needs to do, she's going to make a million dollars. Those are the opportunities that we miss out on when we don't, we're not in the right position. Mm -hmm. And another thing is like, even like with these taxes, even when you go down to... Um, you know, just a regular uh, sale, the was it the auction on those properties? You know, what I mean that don't sell. Like the same thing, like what she did, they don't sell a lot of them because people don't even think about that's even you know that's even a thing. You know, so it's really like yeah. corporations are going around buying them up, and they only work. They only looking for certain certain type of houses they want five and six bedrooms until they can turn into because they're trying to turn everything into rental they don't want nobody owning shit <laughs> yeah and then a lot of people have refinanced and fixed their houses up this is part of the cycle and then now you now the bank comes in and you lose your house and you just put 30 or forty thousand dollars into your house Mm -hmm. See, that's why a lot of this stuff is knowing knowing how to get with somebody, not only to restore your credit and everything and set you up, but also giving you some sort of strategy. Because my strategy might be different from what Antoine's strategy is. 
Antoine's strategy will be different from what Antonio's strategy is. So depending on what you want to do, if you sit down with somebody that knows how to do it, it can set you on the road to, to get whatever your goals are accomplished. Like another big thing, I fix a lot of people's credit. And before I can even get, get them all the way up, they get 10, 15 grand. They down the street back mm-hmm. in six months, then blew it up. And I was like, slow down and build. <laughs> Yeah, I got customers that come back three, four times. Nobody wants to take time to build. This is a this is a slow walk, and not a not a get rich fast thing. And then you you want to use your credit for leverage. But like another good tip, you should be putting you should be putting everything that you spend on a credit card, preferably with the best rewards program as possible. Your bills, your car, anything you would normally do, just send the money right in when you spend it. Send them a check. <clears throat> and what that does is that's that's another way of changing your spending habits so that you can build your credit up. Because remember, they always want to give you enough enough rope to hang yourself. So you fake like you're you need some more rope. But it's a bunch of little strategies like that. Um, I'm gonna try and put in an ebook. Because we give it out to some of the clients, but I'm gonna put it together in the ebook and uh, make that available for people. So the, those that don't want to necessarily pay anybody to do their credit or their business credit and all of that stuff and want to do it on their own, they have that opportunity as well. And even if you do pay somebody, you need to be right there with them learning. You know, some people just tell me, like, you know, I had a lady this week. She was like, I don't care. I don't I don't want to know anything. I just want you to do it. <laughs> and that's fine, too. She says she's too busy. And that, that happens. But for those of you guys kind of that are on the fence of paying and doing it on your own, I would say with the time that you're going to, you're up against right now, if you don't know how to do it, then I would actually just pay somebody. It's not going to be worth the time. So you actually have an opportunity when all of this stuff comes around to pick yourself up that house or car for, you know, 50 percent off. Some of these houses out here in California is five, six hundred thousand dollars. My house is listed at six hundred thousand dollars, buddy, and I can tell you it's not worth that. (laughs) 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 Yeah, Look, listen, in North Carolina and in Charlotte, man, this is going bananas. These houses. These houses, in some instances, are going on up three hundred percent. Yeah, like a house that was last year might have been, you know, thirty-seven thousand dollars is three hundred and seventy thousand dollars. Yep. You guys are in. You guys are in one of those markets too. And believe it or not, people are still buying homes right now. It's crazy. They, they, they're in a frenzy right now. It's slowing down a little bit, but I know you may have to do it depending on your circumstance. But, man, it's, it's about to crumble. It's, this one's going to be bad, too. That's why I came out and started teaching this stuff, because I can see 2008 was just a United States recession. This one's going to be global. It is going to be global and it's going to hit, it's going to hit everybody by surprise. I mean, you can already start seeing it with the food and the oil prices and everything that look at the gas pump. I think my brother said he went in to get, he goes and gets like a bulk chicken in bulk. I think he said he got it for nine, 19.99. The next time he went shopping, it was 30 bucks, 40 bucks that quick. That's inflation. They got to stop it. And in order for them to stop it, they have to raise the interest rates. And I encourage people to keep up. It's uh, something that I didn't do when I was younger. I didn't really think it was important. Then go listen to the Federal Reserve. When they speak, they have a meeting every quarter. That tells you what's going to be happening with the economy for the next, you know, two, three quarters, maybe a year. You got to follow what they're talking about. When they say it's over 
and they're not put, putting out printing out any more money and they're going to go to a, a restrictive policies that's when everybody gets hit in the head if you don't know that's coming and i i called it on one of the videos and i think i said it on clubhouse a few um rooms ago the recession started in november they're just now saying it the news is always late on telling you the truth whether that be on purpose or not but they're all saying it right now it's just it's i hope people get their credit together i'm so happy i'm i'm getting a lot of younger um younger melanated people coming in as well that's important just young people in general but for our community we don't really see young people worried about their credit and stuff that are 18 19 20 years old and that's a beautiful thing to see that they're even talking about it you know what i mean yeah that gives I'm, me some hope what well, the thing is is more into the mainstream now you know what i mean you got tiktok it's all over the Mm -hmm. You feel me? So that was that was the Chinese way of getting back at them. Okay, y'all hit us with Instagram. We got TikTok for y'all next. So that's how it works. <laughs> yeah, they're killing the TikTok is killing the social media game. Yeah, and there's a lot of people that's you know that's where all this 1099 business is coming from. But you know people yeah. just getting snippets, but. A lot of it be a lot of you get a lot of stuff to be true too. You just gotta do your own research. If a if a if you know, I've heard I've I've had a lot of different experiences where just the randomest person, randomest you get some information, some very pertinent information from the just the randomest encounter. You never know. So Hey, you know, <laughs> yep. It's it's all it's it's all good, as they say. You just got to filter through it. Take what you can. Yeah, and and study, 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 man. I know we are busy and we don't have time, but if you just got an hour a night to sit down and study something, as far as your finances, whether that be the FDCPA. FCRA credit, looking at a case judgment summary, anything that you can do to better your education financially and definitely keep up on the news and what's going on because there's going to be a lot of opportunities out there by default. You know what I mean? And what happens is you lose, you're, you're so busy trying to fight for your own stuff because you weren't prepared. That you can't, you can see it, but you can't do nothing about it. Because <laughs> now your stuff is all messed up. Yeah, that's why, we, we, you know what I mean? It's important to learn some other little, like you're saying, some tricks. Um, taking these people to court. Thanks yeah. my... Uh, they got they people smile. that do that for a living, and, and they're making like six figures doing that, like you. <laughs> me, I'm one of them people who do this for a living, sir. Thanks to my good buddy, Alan Rick, who really, who really uh, opened my eyes to it. Yeah, he, would, he was in the room a second ago. I, I'll try and see, will he get up here and talk to you guys? He's a monster with the credit. The credit and the court work, he gets it in. And then, see, he was able to learn a lot of the stuff when he was younger than us. That's like, as far as my family, that makes me happy to see that he's taking that to a whole nother level. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm trying to teach these old dogs new tricks. I ain't learned none of this stuff till I was already in my 40s. You see what I'm yep. saying? Yep. You know, so, yeah, that matters a lot. You old as hell simple-minded like me like i got my my 18 year old i'm gonna sit him down he got a trust and a 750 credit score in a business already and he doesn't even realize what he has <laughs> <laughs> you know he's a little young so i don't want to don't want to pressure him but i'm definitely going to sit down and um 
kind of maybe do like a little YouTube series with him for the younger kids and stuff so they can understand what to do with their student loan money and how they can flip that, take that little that little financial aid and go pick yourself up a tax deed sale or something, get yourself a crib and rent it out. You know what I'm saying? While yeah, you're in school. Or, or when you graduate. Yeah, go take that 750 credit score and go purchase, you know, go get you some a, a fleet and throw them on Toro. So now yep. when you're at, away at school, you, you always got a car. And you always got to ride. Hey, you can have somebody pick you up. You ain't even got to drive. Exactly. You get paid for someone to pick you up. Yep. So I'm going I'm to get on there and we're going to do like a little series with that. Because <clears throat> I think that's important for our young people in the community for just the economy, period. For people to start learning how to manage their credit. So they're not, you know, always in a bad position and can't can't get to these opportunities when they come. Because I used to do that, like, man, if I had a 750 or if I had credit, I could have got this. Or you go to overpaying for something where, you you know, you, you in a Camry instead of a Benz paying the same price. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, I think, too, and a lot of times with some of us, you know, in this, we have a little bit they call it survivor's remorse because you'd be looking at this stuff like, why don't people know this? Because every leaf can't be at the top of the tree. That's why. It's just that simple. So, what you, what's for you is for you. It ain't for everybody. Everybody, you know, when they, they don't get, they wouldn't adhere to the same information, wouldn't grasp and hold on to it. So, Yep. That's kind of like, you know, just, it's just it, it, it. somebody once told me, and it made a lot of sense. Advice is for those who ask. It's, bad. it's not, you know, it's not something that just, just throw it out there and willy nilly. People want advice, they'll ask you for it. And so when people do this type of stuff, they, they're asking because they want to know. And that, and that will push you to, get into where you, that's how I got here because I wanted to know I, I don't like feeling ignorant I went through a whole a whole two three year binge process on this information when I found it out and the first time that I actually got um, like some high limits I was like man I've been playing around with myself this whole time with these little two or three hundred dollar credit cards, <laughs> when somebody actually sat down and showed me how to do it, and I went and studied, I was like, "Oh, it's a wrap." And then once you set this stuff up, you know, once you you go through your personal and your business credit, and you get everything in your trust set up, you don't have to go back and redo that ever again. You set it up right; it's set. Whether that takes you six months or two years, it's done. That's it. Finito. Now all you're doing is adding to it and figuring out different ways that you can um, you can rock it. That's why I love Grant Cardone. Grant, Grant Cardone is doing a version of what, what I'm talking about and what we do. That dude lives off of loan money. That's why they can't tax him. And that's why he's on there always talking so much trash about the IRS. And he said, every time that they come in and they audit me, I find out what I did wrong and I get an education on something. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Exactly, bro. Listen, let, let me tell you something. These people are going to tell you everything. Because remember, they know you don't know. Hello? Why do I got to hide it from this ignorant fool? I'm going to tell him everything. Yep. And you just copy everything they told you. Oh, okay, thanks, sir. And he regurgitated right back to them. Now what? I'm rubber. Remember this game, we were, you started playing it, right? I'm rubber. You remember that? It's yep. So simple. They tell you everything. They're going to tell you everything. That's why, you know, when people go to court, they tell you, they're going to tell you all the objections that you have to overcome. They tell you. So you just, okay, here. Well, you didn't understand that? Well, maybe you'll understand this. 
kind of, you know, if you have that type of analytical mind, and everybody don't. I'm not saying everybody should do this. If you don't have that type of analytical mind in you and attention to detail, maybe you should hire somebody to do it for you. Yep. It, it definitely requires that. Attention to detail. You got to be, because that's how they try to knock you out the box with a little fake procedural things. It's all, and it's all about loopholes, too. Finding loopholes in a lot of this stuff. That's why the, the, the 1099A stuff was working back then, which it was really, they were calling it 1099 OID. But they closed the loophole up. They let a few people in. They couldn't get everybody, but this time they, they hired 150 CID agents. Saying what happens with a lot of this stuff, people will think that it went through. When you do the process and the OID, they're going to give you the money because it's off of an honor system. So you're, you're self-reporting your taxes. So all of these gurus that are giving you these packages and stuff, you're going to be responsible for that. When they come knock on the door, because it's not backed by anything. <laughs> you can't use the birth certificate. It's not a negotiable instrument. It doesn't have a face value. So that's out. If you don't have that thing back by something, when they come check, you're you're in trouble. That's what we're trying to get everybody set up. There is a way to do that and to create some value and um, do the OID process and all of that stuff. But, but if you're not, if you don't have your foundation set up for that, it's not you're not going to even be able to get to it. Yeah, and a lot of people are going to get hurt. Yeah, yeah, and 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 the other thing with that is, if you don't understand and comprehend just the the dollar itself, then none of that stuff matters. If you can't just read a dollar bill and uh, and understand what's on that dollar bill, stop worrying about the ten ninety nines. Stop that. Stop yeah, you're never gonna get there because you already got that. You you got the ten ninety nine in your hand. What you was looking for, you got it. But you don't know it. Mm hmm. Stop doing that. That's the problem with us. We. Anything that shine. Woo. So, and that's one thing too. Me too. I stopped following all these damn, I'm, I'm sick of going down rabbit holes. I'm a damn rabbit hole. I'm out. I'm on the, no more rabbit holes for me, sir. If it's, yep. if it can't be uh, backed up by some empirical evidence, if I ask you for some, because I can show you my, my damn uh, cases and, and some of the settlements that I got. So. Yep. And that. But I kind of want to. I kind of want to talk about that 1099A thing. Because I, I got people calling me about it. So. <clears throat> kind of yeah. the reasons why yeah, it won't work. It, it it does work. But you know how. you <laughs> It does actually. But you got to know how to do it right. It's not just that. It's, yeah. It's a whole bunch and of other things that go with that. And you gotta have yes. your account set up pro properly. Yep. And you gotta know which. You gotta know why. Right. You gotta know why why it's supposed to work. If you can't explain, somebody can't tell you why it works, then you're gonna get in trouble. And I've seen it. That's and that's what I I, I want people to get set up correctly and do it, but you can't jump out the window. And then the other thing is they got people out there that haven't done the process that's teaching people how to do it. How can you teach me how to do the process and you've never done it yourself? Easy, sir. It's called coaching. <laughs> 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 Are you kidding me, Tobias? <laughs> Are you kidding me, sir? <laughs> this is what this world runs on, sir. Experts. Yeah. The, the world is ran on Ex by re by experts, people who ain't did That's shit. Why. Yeah, I could be an expert. Anybody. Can't tell you how to how to go into court and defend this stuff. You can't enforce it. It's it, come on, man. You call back and start asking them when you get in a pinch what to do. And was, I don't know, dog. Yeah, <laughs> they definitely call back. Or you might not even get that number. That's mm hmm. It. Beep, beep. Yep.
but back to why about back to why the 1099 thing so i can kill some of the questions that i'm getting about it yeah you are going to get some money back when you do the oid and it's an honor system they're going to send you the money but they're going to do an audit and when they do that audit if it, if you didn't set it up right they're going to come asking for that money and that's where you're going to get in trouble i know people who have gotten in trouble for it and the problem is not only are people teaching people that that never done it, they just basically got up and put all of these packages together and they're selling them to you for 25, 30, 3,500. And they're just sending some paperwork off. That's all. And guess what? That's all, all the 15 as well, ABCs. they should. And as well, they should. They should be doing that. You know why? Because if you fall for it, that's your fault. That's just where I'm at with it, bro. For real, bro. Because it's right in your hand. If you can't see mm -hmm. it, whose fault is it? It's my fault. My It's yep. my fault. I'm the reason where I'm at. Not nobody else. Ain't no, oh, the system, the government. That not. Nope. Nope. No, sir. I refuse. It's me. It's all me. I did it. Mm -hmm. I did everything. And they're not hiding anything from you. It's all... <laughs> If you want to know how to do the stuff, you just got to sit down and read the instructions. All those sheets come with instructions. And nowhere, anywhere on those sheets does it say that that 1099A is a check. <laughs> People are calling it a check because it's on check paper. So it's a check. No, that's not a check. Flip the, flip the, the thing over on the back and read the instructions. <laughs> yeah, it's... it's... <coughs> Flip the OID over. Flip the Form 56 over. Flip all that stuff over. Really, you supposed to have it with say, It's really supposed to be 10, with 96, actually. So. A, and a 1096 is just an informational thing letting the IRS know that you turned a 1099 OID or AN or C. It's just for informational purposes only. That's it. Yeah. It's not, it's not the, uh, and then the instrument, they don't have any instrument. Where's the where's the value? What's it backed by? You got to have something of value, right? You're saying that something got abandoned. You're saying that you're acquiring something. See, people don't even understand it's the contract. <laughs> exactly. I don't give away too much. It's the contract. But see, in the, instead of addressing it, the, instead of addressing the actual contract, you want to go make another goddamn contract? Well, make a contract. Okay, then finish the contract you just you had. Then, yeah. If that's what you're figure trying out, to figure out how to manage debt. That's all these cats are doing. Yeah. Either There's no it. money. There's no money. It's all debt. Mm. So you got to figure out how to it operate. Is, it is money, sir. So, so what what we call money, in a sense. Because um, it's a concept. So the concept, because so many people believe in it, is real. Yeah. So, it, so it is actual thing, but what is it really? Really, money, it's us. We're really the money. I am money. I'm money. All of us, we're money. Because without us, there wouldn't be no money. Yep. Us putting a value on anything, there would be no value on anything. So the whole concept was is is based on our ideas, our our value system, and what we what 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 people desire. So that's really what the money is. It's not not the uh, Federal Reserve note. Or the franc, or the euro, or the one, or yuan, whatever what you want to call it, a dinar, a lira. We can go on down the line. That's not money. What money is is what people put value on. Yep, that's why Bitcoin is so valuable. And again, it can only be. And and Bitcoin shows you exactly what it is is really imagination. Because every time we imagine it having money, we imagine it and stuff, 
we can get with it and the things we can do. <laughs> Am I lying though? No. no. That's all it really so it is money now. Shit, there's money on this one. Because that's what we talk about, ain't it? We ain't talking about nothing. So the reason I say that is because the universe only recognizes what you say. Like when you say there's no money, then okay, cool. Then it ain't none. Then what do we talk about? Because to other people, to most people, that concept of what they value. What they go, you know, they go to work where they do all these things for is money. Even that, oh, I don't work for the money. Even still, you still want to get paid because that's the value. Even when you're looking at your little computer screen, knowing good and well, it's just a computer screen. It's not really money, but you say it's money. So that shows you really what it is if you step back just for a second and we're like, wow, it's really me because I'm the one I'm the one who caused it to be there at the end of the day. So it's obviously me. It can't be anything else. It's generating and coming from me is all around and, and, and it encompasses who I am. That's kind of the, the basis of it. Once you start to understand that, then it stops being... Look, recession for others is a boom for for a few. So while this is panicking, you can be reaping the benefit because there's certain things that people just can't see. They just can't see it. And I've wondered that all my life. Like, why people just can't see this? Well, it's simple. I kept looking at nature. I was I'm going to keep hearing me say this. Every leaf can't be at the top of the tree. Everybody's not going to get it. And that's fine. They ain't supposed to. Don't make them no less better off or worse off. It just is not for them at this time. Don't make you any better or worse. It's just what it is. It's just part of life. It's just a cycle. In this cycle, you figured it out to this extent. Now, Next cycle, you need to figure something else out. You keep mm-hmm. going, learning. That's it. And you don't think you ever really figure it out. I think it's always a learning process. Yep, but that's why I'm going to go through the process, that 1099A thing, because I see that's what everybody is on. <clears throat> and uh, I'm probably going to do like a little video series on it where we go read the instructions. Uh, show you how to fill out the forms and all of that, but I'll show you why it doesn't work too. And from there, if you can put it together off what I released to it publicly, then great. But I think a lot of people aren't going to be able to put two and two together because they don't understand about ownership. That's a, that's a big thing. And even just with your credit and learning how to work your credit, you got to kind of look at it like you're creating little mini me's when you're doing your, your, your uh, personal credit, once you get that PG, your business credit, those are like little clones of you. So right. you got four or five businesses set up. They're going out and doing the work for you and bringing the money back to your trust. Yeah, exactly. Set up as many, many workers as you can. Yeah. And actually getting getting your business set up. Like a lot of people will open up a business, but they won't go do their government registration so they can do government contracts. They won't do the 411 info. They won't go sign up at all of these places and get their certification for being a black woman or in a minority or in a hub zone. Like we set all of that stuff up for you. And that's, that's what makes your business grow. So now when you come in and you want to go into the bank and say, Hey, I need to get a million dollars or $2 million. then they're going to say, Oh, you got all your certifications, all your paperwork and stuff looks straight. So they know, you know how to manage a business. They're not going to give you a million dollars. They want to know how, I'm, how am I going to get my money back? If, I, if Antoine comes to me and says, hey, Toad, I need 10 racks, my next question is, okay, when are you going to pay me back? <laughs> the bank has the same, you know, same thing. It's not that they're trying to keep us out. It's just that we're not set up properly. 
and they're not going to, it's not their job to sit down and teach you how to do stuff for yourself. Yeah. Not anybody's job to do that. And there's so many distractions and stuff going on that we don't have time to actually stay focused on doing one thing. And I can speak to that for myself personally. I, I, I used to be a master procrastinator. I still procrastinate on stuff. Oh, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. <clears throat> it's this something that you got to, it becomes part of your lifestyle and it gets fun. It starts getting fun when you're walking around with, with a, a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars worth of credit and stuff in your back pocket and not to go blow on buying stuff and taking trips and vacations and all of that. Let your businesses provide that or let the credit card reward points because you're doing your spending right. Let it provide that. You look up and you have a free vacation. Hey, we can go to Mexico. Get the flight in the room. Let that happen naturally off of that. But build. And then a lot of people want to set up and do the government contracts, too. I'll cover that a little bit. Um, that's where the money's going to be at. The government doesn't run out of funding. Remember... <laughs> Everybody's always talking about HJR 192, which is really in public law 7310. Everybody needs to look that up. They got everything for you. Look at the Jobs Act. Go read it. They did it. They just didn't tell you to, to where to go. And where you go <laughs> to sign up is any state, local, federal uh, procurement office. They got tons of contracts for everything. A lot of them don't get filled. The money is sitting there. So why not go sign your business up? I just saw a contract for water. They wanted to buy so much water every month for, for four or five months, $50,000 contract. You can just call Geyser, Kirkland, uh, Alhambra, <laughs> and ask and get some quotes and then put yours on top of that and send it off. And then the more government contracts you do, you get a score with them. And you work your way up the wall from there. But you can start all of that from your personal credit. That's what, what I want to show people the journey that I went on. You can start all of that from your personal credit. We had government contracts to where just going and fixing, a, you know, the state, you, in the state of California at least, you, they don't want their workers touching nothing because they sue. They don't want you to fall doing nothing. So, like, to hang up a picture, they were paying us $250 to come tap a nail in the wall, get a level, <laughs> say, yep, looks good. Look good to you. All right. Is that right? Is that right? Putting in plugs, stuff like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Find something, a contract that you want, and all you're doing is bidding on it. You're bidding on it and writing a capability statement and a couple of other things. It's it's a little bit to it. It ain't that easy, but it's worth sitting down and trying to do one every yeah. week. You only got to bust one. They had a notary. She got one to do notaries for uh, the state of Texas, $100,000 a month. Damn. She lucky I didn't find it. I was looking. <laughs> But it's all kind of different opportunities that you can do when you got your your finances and everything set up correctly. And I know it's hard because we don't have time to do it on our own. That's when you need to hire somebody. Elon Musk is, does not do all the work at Tesla. He has employees. So if you're running a business and you don't know how to do something, but you need it for your business to run, it's worth the money. It's worth the money to get somebody to fix your credit if they can do it in, in six months instead of you doing it in three years. Some of this stuff, we got we to gotta start looking at that. And just in general, in business in general, just hiring people. You need employees. That's where you're all, all your tax benefits come from. A lot of people want to pay people under the table and everything. You're losing out on a ton of tax money, man. That saves you the most. Anything that happens with your employees is a write-off, period. You're not really paying for them. And you're getting a credit on top of that back to you. 
that has something to do with you qualifying for government contracts as well. How many employees do you have? That's how you start being able to get on the, the big contracts, the million, two million dollar contracts. But you got to start somewhere and build up. And it's a it's a little bit of a process if you've never had it set up right or you've never done it. And it's a little bit of a lifestyle change because your credit got messed up from how you were living. So once you get it fixed, you got to change the things that you were doing that got you in the damn position anyway. It is a ton of opportunities out there. And Antoine was talking about building. I wanted to say, talk about that a little bit. That's where I'm at. I want to get some land. That's going to be the only way you're going to have equity in anything. Yeah, well, you you're not going to be able to. You're not going to be able to buy nothing and have no equity. It's going to be going down. But if you build something, now that's a different story. You're yeah. building into equity, and you can rent it out, Section Eight, whatever. My sure. first property that I bought when I was 18, me and my brother, I was staying at the house. <laughs> Staying at the house of my parents. I had to write an affidavit to the lender because he didn't believe me. I've never seen an 18-year-old do that. Sure is. I'm at home. I'm not going to go spend no, no extra money. That's why I was trying to run that play with my son. The very first property I bought. But to yeah. get people to, to sit down and focus on some of these strategies, you know, you can't really get much movement if you don't got your credit clean. That's why I always start people there. That that personal credit is, I don't care if you want to go private. You got to clean it anyway for it to work. Yep. It doesn't matter. You can't have any debt if you want to start uh, talking about going up there and getting a black card and opening up a, t a treasury direct account. No bueno, no debt. And if you do, you better know how to discharge it. You better know how to discharge it. That's what the direct account is kind of for, actually. Yep. It's not the regular way of operations. No. And a lot of this stuff is possible, but, you know, we weren't taught, we weren't taught how to manage money, really. Be honest. Exactly. I know I wasn't. I know what I learned in economic my economics class was how to open up a check account, how to order a checkbook, and how to balance a ledger. That was the sum of, of a semester. You got all that? That was amazing. <laughs> my biggest they'll teach, they'll my teach biggest. you in a heart they'll teach you in a heartbeat how to how to be a part of the system. Shit. They won't teach you how to make money off of it and live comfortably in the system. My, That's my supposed to be coming from the house. Financial advice was save for a rainy day. Yep. Like I tell my my uh, my oldest son, people are telling him to go to college and get a job. I said no, go to college, get a skill, and start a business. Even the stuff we tell our young kids, we got to get them business. It's more. Like he plays sports, but man, there's millionaires doing everything. You can make a million dollars as an IT guy. You can make a million dollars building software, cyber, uh, uh, cyber security. I'm gonna be bringing some of these people onto our channel to talk about that too, because I want people to see, especially our young youth, that you you don't have to just rap and play ball there's a thousand other ways to make money and there's people that look just like you doing it so since they're not going to go get them and interview them i'm going to go get them and interview them and put them up as a matter of fact one of the um one of the biggest it companies is owned by a, a black guy um can't think of his name right now yeah, nobody goes and talks to him at all. I try. I looked up some interviews. 
Nobody even talks to him. He has the biggest IT company in the world. He's a billionaire. Okay. That should have been that should have been on every Jet magazine cover, BT, all of that stuff should have been everywhere. Nowhere to be found, goddamn. Yep, nowhere to be found. Yeah. And that's uh that's something I want to push out there. Like I was telling him about that because he wants to be a doctor, which I'm down with that. But I said, don't limit yourself to just one thing. You can be a doctor and start a practice. That's why some doctors work at Kaiser and some doctors have their own office making three times the money because they understand about credit and business and finances. It applies to anything that you want to do. That's why I love credit. You learn credit and learn business credit and how to do your taxes and everything, your tax structure with your trust. Yeah, that applies to anything that you want to do. Doesn't matter what your business is. That's like a foundational thing. From there, it's just your talent and skill at what you're doing, actually operating the business. You can even you can even start to buy a business and hire a CEO to run it. A lot of these CEOs that you see, they don't own the business. They're, they're not shareholders. They.